السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر اسم لا إله إلا الله اسم لا إله إلا الله اشهد أن محمد رسول الله اشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح يا الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان لكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل احسن حدي حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر امور محدوثاتها وكل ما حدث في الاسلام بدع وكل بدع ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار our praise is due to allah we praise him and we extol him We send the finest of salutations on Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very most truthful of speech is the book of Allah azza wa jal. And the finest guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil affairs are the newly invented ones. Bid'ah. And every bid'ah in Islam is going astray. And every going astray leads to the hellfire. That's the al-afiyah wa thabat. Today, bidn Allah, by the permission of Allah, I would like to remind us of the need and the importance of being vigilant over ourselves and our families to be respectful for the deen of Islam and the symbols and the signs of Islam. Allah tawfiq. In this age of instant gratification, many of us have become deceived by our affluence and our possessions, and our wealth, and our hierarchies in the society. And I want to remind myself and you all that in Islam, there is no hierarchy. Alhamdulillah, I mean, Allah Azza wa Jal, He judges us according to our level of taqwa. And Alhamdulillah, I mean, all of us as Muslims, we need to become aware and acquainted with this concept of taqwa. And alhamdulillah, I mean, there are many Muslims who have, and at the same time, on the other side of the coin, there are many of us who have not achieved that much. But it does not give any of us the right to be disrespectful towards the deen, nor the callers to the deen not realizing that there are many threats in Islam and many warnings in the Quran and authentic sunnah about those people who like to make istiza or mockery or jest and joke about the deen. So there's many warnings of those people who like to oppose the clear 
evidence is found in the Quran and authentic Sunnah. And those who like to oppose the callers to the Sunnah by belittling the message by simply saying that this is only Sunnah. Either not by following the clear guidance or they want to belittle the message by saying that this is only Sunnah. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. I want to start by saying that Allah SWT has stated, "Man yu'adhim shi'a'id Allah fa'innaha min taqwa qaloob. That whosoever honors, shows reverence and respect for the, the symbols and signs of Allah, and this is from the piety of one's heart. And as we head into this holiday season, I want us to be mindful over ourselves and be vigilant over our families. That just because we have the power to spend, that doesn't make us better than everybody else. We have to understand that Allah, He's always scanning our hearts. So we have to understand that Allah Azawajal is scanning our hearts and looking for the people of taqwa. And we know ourselves better than anybody else. As much as we want to say we do not want to be judgmental of another, we know ourselves better than anyone else. And I want to remind myself, you know, that we should not be deceived by our prosperity, nor the opulence of others. Looking at the opulence of others and becoming deceived by what they have. And looking at it and thinking that they have been blessed. Or looking at ourselves and our prosperity and believing that we have been blessed. We have to understand with the eye of Iman that everything that we have is a test from Allah to Barak Ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu He can give a lot to some and He can give a little to others. We have to understand that. Any Muslim, especially if a Muslim has been given plentiful ala ma'asi, then this is a severe test. I'll repeat, especially if the person is a Muslim and they have been given and they have accumulated much wealth on disobedience to Allah, to Barak Ta'ala, by being sinful, then they have been afflicted by a mysterious type of punishment known as istidraj. And this has been mentioned, and this concept has been mentioned in religious theology. Throughout those people who study religious texts, that we must understand that we should not be deceived by our possessions and our affluence or the opulence of others. So when a person has become, as they say, they have succumbed to the lures of this dunya. They have succumbed to the, the lures of possessing and accumulating well, and the fancies of this life, then that person, we can think and feel that they are under the threat of Isitraj. And this has been mentioned throughout the Quran and the Sunnah frequently. For example, where Allah says in Surah Al Qalam, verse number 44 to 45, For Dharni Wuman Yukadibu Bihad Hadith. This is a severe threat where Allah is saying, Leave me alone with those people or that person or those individuals that deem themselves as self sufficient. Allah says, I know about them better than you. We may be deceived by looking at them and feeling that their opulence is a blessing 
and we're looking at them and wishing and wanting to have what they have attained in this life. But we do not remember and we do not reflect on the stories in the Quran, Mathalan, about Qarun. The people looked at Qarun and said, Oh, in Hudul Hadul Adim, he's been given a great amount of wealth and opulence. The people were looking and wanting what he had. But when they seen him sinking down with his wealth, they didn't wish for that anymore. So, when Allah Azawajal speaks about this in his book, and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu speaks about this in his sunnah, and the ulama of tafsir, they explain when Allah Azawajal says, سَنَسْتَ جُرِجُهُمْ مِنْ هِيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ that Allah is going to punish such individuals that deem themselves as self-sufficient. That whatever I have, I earned it. It's mine. This is by my might, my power, my education. And very little or no thanks or gratitude to Allah, Rabbil Alameen. This is due to my intelligence, my effort, my study habits, and so on and so forth. And very little or no thanks or gratitude to Allah, Rabbil Alameen. Dhul Izza, Dhul Zila wa Ikram. La hawla wa la quwata la billah. The ulama of tafsir mentioning this, Sunna Sajirijuhum, min hithi la yalamun. That Allah is planning a strategic attack against such individuals. Allah says that. He, the ulama have explained that, Allah is saying that, he has prepared distractions through their possessions. That Allah has prepared these distractions for them in a manner in which they perceive not. Allah Akbar. That what they have been accumulating of wealth, they perceive that they are blessed. And in reality, they do not understand that this is a distraction for the punishment that's on the way. So we need to educate ourselves and inculcate this into those weak-minded individuals amongst us so that they understand things with the eye of Iman. When they see, for example, those people on social media giving out wads of cash, hundreds or thousands of dollars to random strangers, they believe that these people are very good, very nice, very generous. They don't know that 90% of it is staged. And that few, the, that, that rare few that's giving the money, we have no idea how they earn the money in the first place. We have to know as Muslims from the hadith, the authentic hadith of our brother who, who said that the Messenger of Allah, Islam, he stood up in our midst and he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, O you people, in Allah tayyib, la yakbalu illa tayyib. Al-Hadith. That Allah is good, O people, Allah is good, and he will only accept from us that which is good. So what do we think? We can earn haram money and give it as zadaqah? Allah does not accept. Allah does not accept things that are filthy, earned from ill-gotten sources. With that said, I want to remind myself, and y'all not to be deceived by our possessions. To not be deceived by the opulence of others and what they have. And say, oh, I wish I had what they had. Oh, if I had what they had. And the story goes on and on and on. There's a hadith in the Sahihain. And the third, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi he said, Verily Allah gives respite to the mujrim, the criminal, until he seizes that criminal. And when he does, then he will not be able to escape. And then the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recited the ayah in Surah Hud, verse number 102. وَكَذَلِ أَخَذَ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخَذَ قُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةٌ and this is the example when Allah, a Rabbul Alameen, catches that township, Al-Qura, 
the town, the village, when Allah catches them and grabs them, his grip is strong and mighty indeed. Also, the authentic hadith in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal on the thought of Uqba ibn Amr, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he had stated, إِذْ عَرَيْتَ اللَّهِ يُعْتِيَ الْعَبْ عَلَى مَعَاسِي مَا يُحِبُّ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ إِسْتِدْرَاجِ أَوْقَ مَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ سَلَامٌ If you see that Allah has given one of his slaves, one of his servants, mankind, humankind, from whatever they love in this world, and they are disobedient to Allah, they know that this is a sitraj. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa recited the ayat, verse number 44 in Surah An'am. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شِينَ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِهُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْدَةٌ فِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ when they have forgotten what they have been reminded of, Allah is not violent. Allah is not oppressive. Allah who just sends reminders to people in different forms. Allah sends reminders. Allah who just said, when they forgot what they were reminded of, Meaning what? That they turned a blind eye. They didn't care for the reminder. When they turned away from the reminder, Allah gave them everything. So what you want? Take it. Open up the floodgates of every form of goodness to them. So when they were in the midst of their happiness, and joy for having everything that they ever wanted. Then Allah took them severely and as if they were in a state of shock. And Al Hassan al Basri has stated regarding this mysterious form of punishment. And this, this is something which happens when an individual is in that filthy habit of covetousness accumulating wealth without any intention of worshiping Allah by means of their wealth. They just want to accumulate and they have no intention whatsoever to give gratitude and thanks to Allah. They attribute all of this to themselves. Al-Hasan al-Basri, he had stated, whomsoever Allah has given provision and thinks that Allah Azawajal, is not testing them by what he has given them, they have not been given wisdom. And whomsoever Allah Azawajal, has given little in terms of rizq, and feels and thinks within themselves that Allah will eventually not open up things to them, they have not been given wisdom. And then he added, Al-Hasan al basri he said, Wallahi Rabbul Kaaba, I swear by the Lord of the Kaaba, Allah deceived these people by what He has given them and what He has not given to others. But they believing that they're in control of their sustenance, they're in control of their affluency, their opulence. And then He recited the same ayat. In Surah An'am, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شِينَ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِهُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْدَةٌ فِذَا هُمْ بُبْلِسُونَ May Allah Taala help us to overcome our covetousness and greed. <clears throat> May Allah Taala help us to overcome the gazing of our eyes by looking at what other people have and bless us with that feeling of contentment for what we have. Amen, amen, amen.
بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وتابعه هدى وبارك As we mentioned at the start of today's khutbah that many of us have been fooled by our possessions and we have been fooled and deceived by the opulence of others deeming that that is a sign of Allah's bounty on us not realizing that everything we have were those who are have not it's all a test from Allah to see if we're going to be shakiran if we're going to be truly thankful to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala i want to understand that Allah subhanahu says in his book and in many places in the sunnah of the importance of practicing the deen and being thankful for being guided to the deen and the importance of respecting the sha'a'id of Allah the science of the deen and respecting the callers to the deen walalham loving it for being guided to it for being able to practice it as much as we are able to practice as Allah subhanahu wa says ittaqullah ma sata'tu that we should have the consciousness of Allah to the best of our abilities we do not make excuses for our weakness and we do not belittle the callers to the deen we appreciate that because that is Allah as wajal sending someone to remind us out of his rahma and his mercy and we need to take that as they say with a grain of salt don't take it as a personal attack if somebody is sent to us by Allah and we have to try and and change to the best of our ability in closing i want us to i want to leave us off with this hadith which is sahih sahih al bukhari wal ham an authority of abu hurairah radhiyallahu regarding the three israelites it's a lovely parable that there is so much pearls of wisdom that we can gain that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that allah wanted to test three israelites one of them was a leper this was a, a, a skin disease where people's skin would change and would sometimes fall off one of them was a leper one of them was blind and the other one was bald so allah tabarak taala and we may know this story and we have maybe shared this story with our children but little do we reflect allah tabarak taala wanted to test these three men so allah wajal sent to them a malik an angel straight up an angel he sent to the leper what do you want he said i want to have my skin cured people are repulsed by my appearance i want to have nice skin nice appearance so the angel passed his hand over the man and he was cured from his his repulsive looking skin and he had good skin then the angel asked him what form of wealth do you desire he said what kind of property do you want he said i want a camel so the angel gave him a pregnant she camel and he says barakallahu fi may allah bless you with it then the angel went on to the bald man and posed the same question what do you want he said i want to have nice hair i want to have nice hair he the angel passed his hand over the bald man's head and he had lovely flowing hair he said what form of wealth do you want he said i want to have a cow so he gave him a pregnant cow and he said may allah bless you and then he went on to the to the next man the blind man same question what do you want i want to be able to see the lovely beautiful creation of allah i want to see the world he passed his hands over his eyes and he was able to see and he asked him what do you want of property he said i want sheep so he gave him a pregnant sheep and he said may allah bless you after some time when they became wealthy 
living in opulence. The same angel came back disguised as a leopard, a sick leopard. And he said, I am, he came to the man who was previously a leopard, now living in a lap of luxury, with his field as far as the eye can see of camels. He said, I am a sick man, and I ask you, I need to complete my journey. I, I have no riding animal. I ask you, by the one who gave you all of this, can I have one to complete my journey? He said, no. This is mine. This is mine. I earned it. I inherited this from my forefathers. This is mine. The angel said, I think I know you. I recognize you. Weren't you a poor leopard that everyone was repulsed from? Then he went on to the next person. Afwan. He said, yeah, I think I recognize you. I know you. Weren't you a poor leopard that everyone was repulsed from? He said, if what you're saying is not true, then may you return back to how you were before. He went on to the next person. And he asked the person who was a bald person. He had all of these cows, field of cows. He said, I am a poor person. I need to have one of these cows to complete my journey. May I have one? May I have one from the wealth that Allah has given you? He said, no. This is mine. I inherited this from my forefathers. And the story goes on. And he said the same thing to that man. I think I recognize you. Were you not a person who was bald and you were repulsed from the people and you were poor? He said, if what you're saying is a lie, then may you return back to how you were. Then he went on to the man who was blind. And disguised as a poor, blind traveler. And he said, can you help me? I'm a poor, blind traveler. I need to have some of these sheep to complete my journey. Can you please give me one or a few from the wealth that Allah has given you? The blind man said, no doubt that at one time I was poor. I did not have anything in terms of wealth. And Allah gave me all of this wealth. Take from whatever you have. Take from whatever the wealth I have. The angel said, may Allah bless you in what you have. I am an angel and I came as a test for you. I am an angel and I came in the form as a test for you. You passed and your companions failed. May, you, may Allah bless you. Keep your property and barak Allah feed. And may Allah bless you in what you have. This is the reminder for myself and you all that we need to be a person who is grounded and recognize and realize the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Let us not become stubborn and mutakabir and full of pride in our opulence, living in the lap of luxury, feeling that we are better or we earned, and the story goes on and on and on. So I ask Allah by his names and his attributes to have mercy on us, to forgive us, to guide us, and to cleanse our hearts from the, the greed and the want and of covetousness. May Allah Azzawajal make us of those that when we get, we're happy to give for his sake. May Allah Azzawajal bless all of us, bless our families, and keep us guided and blessed. Allah Sabeel Rashad. Amin, amin, amin. In Allah, my life, you salon ala nabi, ya ledina amanu. Salam, 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 Muhammad, wa ala Muhammad. Come on, salam, ala Ibrahim, wa ala Ibrahim, inna ka hamidu majid. Alhamma barak ala Muhammad, wa ala Muhammad. كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا عاتني في حسنة وفقك في قيمة من قيمة سلام